All right, so we're going to talk about graphs today, and uh, basically A-level graphs. I'm going to be using uh, mainly AS context material for Cambridge because um, most of that material is uh, very comprehensive, and along with that, uh, on that basis, you can actually do most of whatever you need. All right. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to see the points of the mark scheme, a Cambridge mark scheme, uh, on which you have um, uh, the graph marks, and uh, it's actually relevant for AS, A2, uh, Edexcel, O levels everything because they follow these points. So yeah, let's just go really quickly through these. So this is the AS 9702 Cambridge syllabus. All right. So basically, um, let's talk about the graph. So you have the concept of the layout of the graph. Uh, the layout is basically about the axis, the x-axis and the y-axis, and about these things here. So first of all, what you have to do, uh, you can read through this uh, in detail. I'll just go really quickly through the points that we want to. So what's going to happen is on the x-axis and the y-axis, you have to label them very well with their quantities. And uh, whenever you do that, you have to make sure that you use SI units. And the units, the, the the scales on the graph shouldn't be anything which is an odd scale, but should be values of 1, 2, 5, or 4, things like that. Uh, this would be a big box. So each division should be 2 or 5 or 4 or 1, like, or one, not like 3, 7, stuff like that. So anyway, that's one of the major points. Then uh, there's this concept of false origin. So what is false origin? False origin and true origin. So true origin one is, is whenever you draw a graph which starts from 0, 0. But what if you don't draw a graph which starts from 0, 0? Then we use something called a false origin. For example, if I was to just sketch a graph here. So say I have a graph like this. There's no point for me to start the origin, the true origin from here. I can use my graph paper and actually fit it into here. At this state, what's going to happen is this would be the origin of my graph. But this is not a true origin because it's not 0, 0. It's actually a non-zero y value and then a zero x value so this is a false origin so we would write this as say uh, x axis value of zero and a y axis value of say 20. so uh, that would be the origin of the graph and then it starts from there so these are called false origins whenever you use a false origin you have to be very sure to label it and the other thing that you can do is give it discontinuity which represents basically a broken line or a dashed line or a uh, line like this which represents that this is zero zero there's a jump here after which you can go to 20 here so this is actually not so effective compared to this. I would personally prefer you give false origins. And they never mention about discontinuities in the syllabus. So it's something that you should avoid, actually. But it's not exactly wrong, but it's not the best method. All right. And uh, there are other points of the layout here. So this is basically the axis point. Then you have plot. So plot is basically you have to make sure that the plots that you put on the graph they are uh, within the values of your table. They have to agree with your table values. And if you do that stuff where you write the table values and then you plot the graph and then you say they don't match, so you put the plots on the table, on the graph, and then go back to your table and fix it, it's not exactly a smart thing to do because you don't have that much time in the exam. And also, um, you're going to be moving away from the natural average of your experiment. So it's actually not a smart thing. But um, given that you use the values of the table, what you should see is um, they will actually check your plot values. These are plots given based on a student's marks, uh, student's values. And uh, you'll see that they actually check the plot down to half a small square. So when they say half a small square, what this means is each one of these is a small square, obviously. And if your plot was here, then a half a small square means you have an error of this much area. You cannot move out of this area. For example, if you put it here, this would be wrong, which is exactly what's going on here. So yeah, let's let's just take a, a closer view of what I'm trying to say. Uh, then um, it should be more to point. So yes, here you can see the student's plot was here, but his table value was actually this. The examiner checked this, and it was rechecked. The red pen was by one examiner. The green pen was the second examiner, the recheck. And basically, both of them agreed that the values of the table did not match with this value of the plot. So be extremely careful. They're going to be very, very precise about these sort of things. So that's the second point, which is plot. So we talked about axis, then we talked about plot, A, P. And then we have trend line. So the line has to be basically a trend, which is a best fit line. It should be a sharp line. A best fit line, very, very important. A best fit line doesn't mean that it touches all the points. That is not necessarily true. A best fit line is a line which is drawn with good scatter. For example, this would have been a good scatter graph if... Um, he drew it with a little less gradient. Here you can see it's a little steep, so it shouldn't be so steep in this case, so that because if you pay attention to his graph, you'll notice there are no plots above the line. So when they want a good scatter, they're basically wanting equal number of scatter above and below the line. So basically that's something he didn't do here. So that's why he, he lost a mark for his line also. So yeah, this is axis, this is plot, then you have line, and you have quality. 
So quality is basically the next one that we have to talk about. Uh, so yeah, a line consists of this. If it's a straight line, a straight line. If it's a curve, it's a curve. If you need to draw tangents, then those sort of things. And quality basically means uh, is uh, did you draw a sharp line with a sharp pencil? I suggest you use either a mechanical pencil, a lead pencil, or you use a HB pencil. Because if you use a 2B pencil, then it is not exactly the best way to do it. And then we come, we have to come back for a bit for the plot concept. Here, uh, one thing I would like to show is when you draw your plots, uh, this isn't the ideal method by which plots are drawn. Here is an example of, a, of the paper. So what are the ways that you can actually plot a point? So one way is that you plot a point like this, so small and so fine that you actually have to circle it and show that my plot is somewhere here so that the examiner knows that somewhere here is your plot. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is actually drawing crosses. So like, you know, this would be a way to represent this. You can draw it as a cross like this or a plus sign cross like this. This is also another way, depending on whatever you're comfortable with. So this has the advantage of being visible. This has the advantage of not matching with the line. For example, if you have a point here, then this is actually a better way to put your plots uh, compared to if you give it like this. So if you like, you know, this overlaps with the line. What you shouldn't do is exactly what is done here using blobs. This isn't a blob exactly yet. A little bigger. If it was larger than half a small square, then it would be considered as a blob. The moment you draw blobs, you lose marks. You cannot draw blobs because it makes your coordinate look very uh, imprecise. So yes, either you draw a dot like this and then you circle it to show that my dot is here. If you draw something like this, it's not exactly the best way. So the other way is you draw crosses like this. So yeah, any one of these two is fine. You know, whatever is your personal preference and whatever works for you. All right, so that is the point based on uh, the plot of the line. Other than that, if we talk about a little more about the axis, well, we're just going uh, through the points again. If we go talk about the layout and the axis, one important thing that you have to remember is the graph doesn't have to occupy the entire graph, the area of the graph. By that, what I mean is if you have a graph which uh, you're stretching, for example, this student, what he did is he stretched the graph as far as he could to make it fit you know, onto the paper. It wasn't something which was necessary. As long as you're using more than half of the graph, it's all right. And when I mean half of the graph, you have to be using it more than half along both axes. So that basically means if you draw a line here, uh, your plots, not the not the line, by the way, your plot should occupy at least half along the y-axis and another half along the x-axis. That's what you have to be aware of. Not more than that. This is important, and you have to you have to focus on this. And another important thing is that um, it's not necessary to stretch it to the very end of the graph. That's actually something that is not recommended because it will make you pick up awkward scales. So whenever you use awkward scales, you'll end up having a very weird set of graph values or graph uh, division scales. So it's not exactly the best way to do it. So there goes that. So yes, uh, usually you have at least four marks on a graph. Axis, which I talked about, you have to label them properly. You have to give suitable scales and, and they have to be marked clearly. Plot, your plot should occupy at least half of the axis along the x and y axis. They should be plotted clearly and they it must be equal to the values of the table values. If not, you're going to lose marks. Line, it should be a line which, is, which has a best fit property where, where the scatter is equal and above and below the line, which is not true here. As you can see, this arrow represents the second checker showed, also the first checker showed that uh, the line is actually too steep. So you need to make it uh, a little less steep. So yeah, they said that the quality is all right because the axis along the sides are all right. It's large enough, but the scales and everything was a little problematic. And he also did not label the false origin properly. So yeah, then we have to talk about the concept of the tangent uh, or, or the gradient basically of the graph. So for this, what I would like to do is uh, there's this Cambridge book. It's called the Standards Booklet where they actually represent students of good graphs and good standards. So you can actually Google this and find this. It's called the Cambridge International ASA A-Level Physics Standards Booklet. So here they've given examples of an A-grade candidate, what sort of graph he would draw, and so on. We'll move on to that. So this is an A-grade graph. Look at the scale. It's, it's pretty decent. You have the, the values labeled, the units labeled very nicely. You have a sharp line, more or less sharp straight and I strongly suggest you use a transparent 12 inch plastic scale. Do not use steel scales and do not use metal scales because they make it very difficult to identify the scatter when you put the scale on your graph. You have to see underneath the scale also. So yes, please use uh, one of those 12 inch long transparent plastic scales. So yes, you can see there's an equal scatter above and below the line. The, the coordinates are labeled very nicely and it's pretty nice. The origin is also labeled nicely. So this would be a very decent clean and sharp graph. So yeah, uh, there's also a few a little bit of detail here about what did you do and how did you draw it and more or less it's pretty much something which is up to the mark. 
Second is a grade, uh, grade B student. What sort of graph he drew? As you can see, he gave a discontinuity and um, half a small square. A couple of his plots are all right. He didn't use a gradient triangle. And um, the best fit line is not exactly steep enough. It has to be steeper. As you can see, the dotted line represents the steepness of the line that it should have been. Labeling is all right, but it's still a B grade graph and not so good. Again, there's a little bit of text here about how uh he was he wasn't able to score the greatest marks that he could he actually missed out 1.5 1.6 and 1.8 he didn't even put 1.7 properly that's why he lost a mark here and we have an e grade graph like candidate e so here you can see he did label it and everything the scale isn't effectively used it doesn't use uh I barely uses more than half or actually just half and another problem about the gradient triangle is it occupies less than the half of the plotted line. The line that you draw, your best fit line, uh, more than half of it should be used for drawing the gradient triangle. And you should not, ideally, you should not take the table values for drawing the for taking the values for the gradient. You should take fresh read-offs. As you can see, the A grade student took fresh read-offs from the graph, these two values. So this is what you should do for the gradient triangle. You should not take table values again. That defeats the purpose of drawing a best fit line. A best fit line is a graphical average. So if you actually don't use that method, then you're losing a point here. So yeah, that's that's another point about the gradient. And obviously, this is a pretty poor graph. It's just the line is too thick. There's too many anomalous points. The scatter is awful. So yeah, please don't draw these sort of graphs. And then they have some uh, working about how to find the gradient. You have to show you're working very clearly with all the points and decimals. And uh, yeah, that's what they expect you. So yeah, an A grade student would be actually doing all of this work, showing the coordinates, finding the gradient, and doing the maths behind it. The points that I mentioned about the graphs and everything is more or less relevant to all the chapters and all the syllabus and all the curriculum at Excel Cambridge, regardless, O levels, A levels. Everyone will have at least four to five marks. Easiest way to remember this is by remembering axis plot line quality. Axis is for your X and Y axis. Have they been labeled properly? Do they have suitable scales? And do they have units? Plot is for seeing did you plot all the points of your table? Does it occupy more than half of the grid along both axes? Not the line again, the points. And they have to be sharp points, which can be easily identified, not blobs. Line is your best fit line. Is it a thin, straight line without any breaks? Avoid using a short scale for this and also use a transparent one so that you can also draw a best fit line with equal scatter above and below the line. Very important. Again, the plot doesn't have to pass through. The line doesn't have to pass through all the plots. That is very important. Keep that in mind. And line and quality is obviously along with that. The thickness of the line and also the breaks in the line and all of these things. And also... Uh, the gradient triangle should occupy the hypotenuse of the gradient triangle should occupy at least more than half along both axes so yes there you go everything that can be said as quickly as possible about these sort of graphs i made a few repeats and i hope you can remember all of that best of luck with your exams